Maryam State, AK Local Government precisely. Uh, my primary school at Kwaibo Church Primary School, so young AK, where I grew up in the early 70s. I moved into Government Secondary School at Faikate. I finished my school set in 1981. It was a jolly good experience. Before I moved over to Lagos, where I did my higher school, Federal School of Art and Science, Victoria Island, and from where I took my jam, then I got admission to study English and uh, Literary Studies in the Great uh, University of Calabar. Growing up was fun, education was fun, we enjoyed the bits for life, all we went through there, from primary to secondary school, the dormitory life, my friends, my colleagues. Coming over to Lagos was quite an experience. My first time in Lagos, arriving after a tortuous journey of back then. Went over to VI, studied along, with some blue chip children. Federal School of Art and Science then, as it was called, just uh, where you have uh, the law school now. It was quite an experience. And uh, back to University of Calabar, we had quite a drill, the studies of English language and literature. I happen to have uh, specialized in literature, where we did a thorough work on all the spheres of literature, the landscape of literature, we almost exhausted it with key professors and lecturers. Talking about Afro-American literature, Caribbean literature, South African literature, Russian literature, literature of social protest. Then we come back to African literature where we explored the whole landscape. African literature, African drama, African prose, and storytelling, folk tales, and trickster stories. It was a huge experience that changed my life. And uh, coming over here, uh, finished our youth service, did my youth service in Nemo State then. We had respect as, as corporate, we were well treated. And uh, came over back to Lagos, looking for work in Lagos, 1988, 89. We started uh, a magazine in Lagos here. We call it the Hit Magazine. It was tailored after the Right On magazine. It was a music magazine. We started that stuff in Lagos here and then uh, we couldn't sustain it because of the finances. Luckily for me, I was able to run, got a job with the bank and then I started a marketing aspect for the bank. From the bank, the merchant bank, when the bank went under, I decided to go solo. That brought me to the book industry. I have uh, always have this passion for books. Right from my primary school to my secondary school, my mom was a teacher, a successful teacher. We were encouraged to read books. We used to hide ourselves in the libraries, my local government libraries. So when I got admitted to the University of Calabar, all our long vacations, we were always found in the library. Of course, there was no GSM then. The library was our contact space, where we go to the libraries to get information about when the school is going to resume. Because apart from news, radio and all that, you may not know when the school is going to resume. But when you meet with your friends, you know, in the library there we meet with some other undergraduates, Uniben, Nsuka, Ife, some of our friends who were studying there who came home for long vacations. I mean, we interact with them and before you know it, we hear you people are going to resume this, this, that, that, that. And that's how my passion for books gets strengthened. When we resume schools, we exchange novels. We look for novels to read. We look for African writer series, we look for Headley Chase, we look for exotic books. We started collecting books. When we finished reading, we shared the books to our friends. We talked about the books and from there we were able to explore the world. We sat down in the library and we knew what was happening. 
in the apartheid South Africa. I did so much about the history of South Africa. I read about the Zulu aftermath. I read about the, the Mau Mau Wars, the challenge of colonialism, the pro-colonial times. I had a good teacher who taught me history in the secondary school, Miss Tutin. He did a yeoman's job. He led us through the whole spectrum of West African history. West African history by Adekunle, Aromo Laran. We talked about the Yo Empire, Songhai Empire, Timbuktu, the Great Mali Empire. You know, all these things stir up our curiosities. And since then, we never departed from books. We have worked in close association with the Institute of Public Analysts of Nigeria, IPAN. These are people that do analysis for products water analysis, analysis of uh, waste and effluent, radioactive activity, food and drug analysis. We have worked with quality control experts across the industries. We have worked with uh, establishments where they do root crop research. We have worked with the pharmaceutical research industries, with medical research bodies, malaria research establishments, cancer research establishment, these people look for us for specialized information in the management of special disease and treatments. Treatment in oncology. People in the area of um, traditional medicine, alternative medicine, natural medicine, they look for We are partnering with the Nigerian Institute of Science and Technology, Institute of uh, Natural Medicine in Victoria Island, to work with them in the area of uh, the development of herbal medicines in Nigeria. We have books we partner with them to promote. You see, medicinal plants from eastern Nigeria, medicinal plants from the northeast, medicinal plants from the southwest, medicinal plants from the south-south. We market these books for people who want to know. No, we are working now on the production in partnership with relevant institute of the Nigerian Pharmacopoeia. We know about the British Pharmacopoeia. We know about the American Pharmacopoeia, the Japanese Pharmacopoeia and Herbology. We are working towards having the Nigerian Pharmacopoeia. This is going to be a compendium of materials that talks about medicinal plants of value medicinal plants that have healing properties. We are working with specialists, pharmacognosy, phytochemists, and by God's grace, this is going to come into fruition. We partner with the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria and all kinds of uh, health bodies that we can't even mention. So many of them invite us for their annual conferences, uh, which is rotated across different streets in different years, across the nation. So we've traveled, and in uh, most of these um, conferences, you have experts, deans of faculties, heads of departments that reach out to us with information in books and journals that are relevant for their students and for their practitioners. We don't only market reference books and textbooks in all fields of study all fields of human endeavor. We also market relevant journals, research journals, peer-reviewed journals in sociology, in psychology, in law, research journals, in oncology, in public health, community medicine, in nursing, research journals in nutrition and dietetics, food science, international relations. We partner with the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs in, Vic in Victoria Island, we have key journals in world affairs, African affairs, and these journals will help them to distribute to all relevant establishments and departments that need it. 
So it has been a, a great job. Very taxing and exciting. Each book added a new spectrum of learning and knowledge for us. When we got into literature and poetry, we explore a whole lot. When we went into American history, the black history, we, 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 we read about the nation of Islam, we read about Elijah Muhammad. We knew the struggle they had to go through, racism and all that stuff. And it really inspired us to see what we can do to add value to knowledge. And it has brought us this far. So it's been passion, not really born out of the money or whatever. Of course, when you have value to present, you'll be appreciated in many ways. We have had sundry appreciations from establishments, from institutes across West Africa and beyond. You know, we partner with uh, international publishers all over the world to source cutting edge materials for our clients. We take pains to go through a lot of materials that come in here. Whether there are new materials or whether there are new, we believe that when you are doing research, that is what is called cross-cultural research. You start from the past and then come to the present. Research in any field, what happened before? Where we were before and where we are now and then we look forward. So we have a lot of materials for our clients and we are on an endless journey of search. When we started this business, we came face to face with HIV. We go after books on HIV and AIDS. We got them across to our clients and our readers. As we went further, Ebola came and we sourced for materials for medical virologists. It's, it's, it's a virus, clinical virology. We gave the books to them and they were very happy. We got the materials. We did what is called public health awareness to get the people assured that these things are preventable. That is not the end of life. You see, when you have the information, you have the, the confidence to practice. You are not scared of whatever. Whatever is coming in probably had happened before. All we need is for new information to combat the emerging diseases. There are journals that deal with emerging infectious diseases. We provide these materials for practitioners and it has uh, served the purpose over the years. The secret of uh, my success has been the impartation of specialist knowledge, tertiary knowledge for professionals. You know, education and learning is a lifelong journey. People talk about continuous professional development. For instance, in the area, in the media, in the media world and the real estate world, we are partner with people who are doing media studies. You know, the print media the electronic media, mass communication as a whole. We have provided a lot of materials for them. So now we have specialists in the media, we have special editors, screenwriters, short story writers, photojournalists, you know? And we provide them these materials. In the real estate world, we have attended conferences of real estate practitioners providing cutting edge materials for them in real estate, estate development, information technology, 
property development, property law, all these materials assist them in the practice of real estate. We have gone a f far more. We work with people, the QS, quantity surveyors, town planners, environmental managers, people who do environmental audits, environmental impact assessments, you know, space planning, we work with them, you know. And these materials we get from all across the world. If you are practicing in this area and you need materials to improve your services and the value you are creating, you will need us. We have a whole list of experts in different fields that reach us when they have challenges, when they have need for special information to solve specific problems. They reach out to us. They call, yeah, a bookman, all range. We need books in this area. For instance, we had a former minister of health, that great woman, Gonja Iwala. She will always call us, look, all range, we need uh, books on uh, international economics. And we used to give her books on international economics. And many other experts like that. We have books for people who are doing radioactive interventions. People who are doing environmental management, people who are doing analysis, food analysts, all over the spectrum. We provide books for them. Food engineering, we give them books on food contaminants, food additives. These are not books to just go to anywhere and get. We have been able to interface with them, Nigerian Institute of Food Science and Technology. Reading has a tremendous impact on influence on human life. It helps you to appreciate issues, ideas, views, and opinion. It makes you an active um, participant in the intellectual discourse and in intellectual environment. You are not ignorant of what is happening around you. It makes you a leader. Yes, not all readers are leaders, but most impactful leaders are readers. Books will change you. Books will empower you. Books will give you self-confidence. When I sit down with uh, architect and I'm discussing, I talked about landscape architecture. I talked about interior design. They begin to wonder whether I studied architecture. Then I, I, I started talking with uh, oncologists gynecologists, maybe gynecological oncologists. They think that maybe I studied medicine. I didn't do no medicine. I've been able to read some books, interface with them. I have, I have attended their workshops, so many, and I've read their books. Some books that come to me, I try to go through the introduction and the preface. I try to. Books in all areas, you understand? I was looking at a book on anesthesiology and I found out that no serious surgery could be carried out without an anesthetist. Surgical intervention, is it abdominal surgery, is it cancer oncology, you need a professional. These are people that manage the airways. 
when the patient has been numbed with drugs for the intervention, the surgical experience, maybe for three, four, five hours, there has to be a resuscitation. And this is the specialist area for anesthetics. Not all doctors can handle that. You are doing cesarean section. You are doing a ENT surgery. You need them. So you have a team of doctors that will invariably handle a serious... Uh, for instance, at the orthopedic hospital, we want to do amputation. You have the plaster people, you have the hematologists, you have the anesthesiologist, you have the surgeon who is a very good orthopedic surgeon to handle amputation, whether it's amputation of the legs and all that, because they have to manage, the, 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 the hematologist will manage the loss of blood, then the anesthetist, then the orthopedic nurse will be there. Then we have the theater nurse will be there. All of them well kitted for the operations. It, it will look as if they are going to travel to Mars. Safety procedures, management of spills, cleaning, and everything. Then rolling the patients to a special Maybe it's an amenity ward where they are going to keep the person to manage the post-operative procedures and all that. Of course, there are pre-surgical uh, experiences, the tests, the examination, the review and all that before the real process. So these are not things we learned overnight. It has taken a process of time. And we got to know that, oh, this is how the deal is done. Great insurgents of e-materials, e-books, digital books, and of course the World Wide Web. It has helped us to access materials easily but you see initially people were afraid that with the advent of the ebooks and all that that the textbooks the physical books would be phased out but that is far from the truth libraries still get their core text and materials they have the sections for the cortex and materials and journals and serials. Then they have the section we call the digital libraries. Polytechnic libraries, university libraries across the countries, they have these sections. But my experience with these uh, digital libraries has been the management of digital libraries the power situation in Nigeria and the maintenance culture. Most of the institutions that started with the e-library, they have always come back to complain that these materials, within a short spell of time, because of instability of power. You know, the computers and all the digital infrastructures, they need steady and standby power supplies. Most of them have acquired the solar systems to power these equipments, but truly speaking, it has not been sustainable. Sometimes we have some dubious students vandalize these facilities, and then people always have to fall back on books. With the smartphones now, students, can get a lot of materials and all that, and they read. but I can tell you that uh, people who are doing serious research, they come back to us for books. You are doing research, you have to do your references, your bibliography, 
you have to show evidence materials you have read both online and offline you are doing your doctorate program master's program to whatever level that we've added value to education, to training, and to teaching. Our next phase now, we're trying to see how we can give back to the society. Through our interface with like-minded uh, NGOs, we are started uh, our book cafe, All Range Book Cafe, where we invite people with a private library to come and read and study in a relaxed atmosphere where you can come in and do your book reviews. If you are a writer, you come in and do your book reviews, review your textbooks. Going forward too, we also have our NGO, which we are working on, that borders on environmental management. We call it the Campaign for Sustainable Environment. This is a program we have been running the last five years. We are talking about global warming and climate change. We do environmental education.